Separation still curses our intent. Do you not remember the detail of those years? Our spiritual life bringing us to this? History fails in mention what soul has seen. With but narrative, I could smite your confusion, clothe you in knowing, and unveil the pretense parading as reality. Comprehension available only to those ready. You'd never believe me anyway how far out legends reveal. Reason always fails to enrapture. It's not my job to convert. Hint only to those having set sail. Mark direction for them seeking passage beyond to often bizarre realm. Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores, thinking the world flat. I'm with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion, fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Do not forget the myth of our coming. Soon we will praise heroes of stranger tales than even my own. Watch where it is, you wander friend. The dark night has strange requiem. Mythic acclaim promises new season for those blessed to interpret meaning. Recognition dons the eye. Never any coincidental meeting. Come, I await you this way to paradise. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is FallenAngels.tv. And I thank you for taking the time to join me this day. I'm going to cover some uh, some questions and, um, and share with you some insight on what I think to be a very important topic, and that's the difference between paradise and the Garden of Eden. Because most people equate them to be the same, but it's my opinion, and having studied a lot of uh, different texts and read many, many um, extra biblical texts, as well as you know the official canon, the apocrypha, pseudepigrapha, things of that nature, that there is a differentiation of which we should know about and that once you understand uh, the differences, it helps one to make sense of the whole story that is related in Genesis because there's, um, you know how the, the Bible, especially in the chapter of Genesis, there are some things that are um, ambiguous, which we can find greater detail to in a lot of the other texts. Like even, for instance, between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, there's the whole, how the, you know, the earth, was null and void, uh, was formless. And we know that the, the Most High did not create it as such, that the creation was made in perfection and harmon, harmony as all other things, but that somehow it became null and void. And that there was a judgment, the whole Tohu wa bohu. And for those of you that have 
looked into and studied what I'm talking about, um, it's related as being a gap theory and that there was, you know, the generations of the heaven and the earth, that there was much time that had occurred prior to whatever it was, the event that made the earth null and void and which began again the next era um what i refer to as the second world age or the next cycle chapter of life here upon the planet and i cover this in in other you know in a lot of other shows and uh, specifically in my sixth book sons of god where i relate the story of the timeline of creation and I break down for you how it is that Genesis lines up with the other the like the Enuma Elish, um the Akkadian and even the Canaanite creation stories that detail the story of the war between the Lord of Hosts and the dragon Tiamat and how Really, this story is metaphorical for the uh, how it is that the early solar system came to be and settled into uh, its current formation, and how all the planets had taken on new orbits, and and whereas Mars had been the jewel of the solar system and and that there the place that was the focus for life in the solar system after the destruction of Tiamat which was the old earth then the focus was upon what was the new earth and that um cuz the earth used to be the planet Tiamat or what some call Phaeton or Maldek, and that this planet used to be where the asteroid belt now is, and that the destruction of it, the judgment of it, which is related in Jeremiah 4, verse 23 through 26 or 7, I believe, um, which talks about a time when there was not yet man, and all the birds of the heaven fled and the cities of the wilderness were destroyed uh this was a judgment that was levied upon the fallen angels but anyways um this is just an example so there's a lot that seems almost like it's left out even though it it's not uh, even with you know the the separate creations between uh, what was pre-adamic humanity and then modern humanity um and how it talks about a time when the earth was did not yet know rain. And I cover, again, all of this information in a lot of shows that I've done on this particular topic. Um, and if you're interested in it, just you can go to YouTube and search the Genesis timeline, and you'll get greater detail. On that, but I, I've done several series on this because it is such a huge part um, as far as you know the Genesis accounting. It, it's such a huge as far as you know all the old legends and lore, the other creation epics. If you understand all that, it, it's hard to align all of those with the Genesis counting. But that being said, um, I want to elaborate today, focus on paradise and the differences between the Garden of Eden because we were created, or Adam and Eve, Adam was um, created in sight, according to the Gnostic text, in sight of the fallen angels that were, the rebel angels that were already cast out and banished here to the dark earth but then was taken to paradise and was to tend and 
be the caretaker, the overseer over paradise, which is the garden of God. And that this is the place from which Satan had beguiled and tempted he and Eve. And they're wanting to be as gods themselves. They were then cast out of paradise and they lost their original place of habitation, much like uh, the rebel angels and then the watcher angels after them. And so I'm going to explain that. I'm going to detail this and kind of elaborate on this by using um, one particular, well, maybe two paragraphs from a, a book called the Book of Rolls, the Kitab al-Magali, which is a, a book from the church elders the you know the elders of the early church and um it was i believe gathered or compiled or saved by clement but anyways um so we'll establish the premise for all of what we're going to be talking about and going into today with that particular those two paragraphs cuz um I think it lays it out in in a way that is not found in great detail all in one particular place. And so, but I did want to also share really quick a, a pa well, it was basically a, a, an attack and some questions that somebody had, um, a challenge they had issued to me on one of the comments from my YouTube, one of my YouTube videos, I forget exactly which, because there's almost 600 of them up there, and they cover all these details. And I'm not going to name this particular person. I'm just going to read um, the commentary, which will, again, establish the premise. And it will also answer all of these questions as well. And this is also one of the reasons why I decided to do this show, because I, I do feel like that there is um, confusion on this issue, and it would help m me to put it all in one particular place uh, so that if you have questions or others later have questions along these lines, I can just, you know, just give them the link. Because um, it is tedious to, if I were to retype, retype, retype over and over all of the things that are contained within my books, uh, it's a lot easier to just share a radio program or a video link of something of that nature with others so that I don't have to retype all that or re-explain uh, all of what people are asking about. And then also it elaborates and shares other information which is in relation to the questions that you and others are asking me. So, Okay, the person wrote this. In addition to my com comments below, I am issuing you this challenge right here and now. I challenge you to show us your proof from the text. In Genesis, where it said that Eve had a set of twins, one of them Satan's child and the other the child of Adam's. And I challenge you to explain how it was even possible for you to claim that they eating from the tree of knowledge and good and evil was intercourse and why wasn't it also um, have, and well, some of this is a little bit, jumbled but you'll you know get the idea and why wasn't it also having intercourse from eating from the other tree is as well then if you can please explain to us how it was possible for eve to have satan's baby when the bible says adam did not know his wife until after they were put out of the garden which is very interesting um and a point that uh, we're going to be elaborating on because he's right. Um, it, it wasn't until after they were put out of the garden. 
this completely destroys your theory. Actually, it does not, but this completely destroys your theory if people carefully read these biblical accounts as literal. Actually, some of the variations of the serpent seed doctrine state that Adam did not know Eve intimately during the time of their stay in the garden, he means paradise, but Satan did. But according to the word of God, it destroys all such theories because the conception of Cain took place after Adam and Eve were put out of the garden. Very true. From the fall, eating of the forbidden tree, whereas the sin was from eating of the tree which caused the fall took place in the garden. Uh, absolutely correct. You would have to do some truly unscriptural doctrinal gymnastics to try and connect Cain's conception to the encounter with Satan as the tree or fruit. But in doing so, you would have to change the literal descriptions in Genesis to an allegory, a symbolic story in nature. The plain text shows this is a literal event, literal trees, literal people, and a literal serpent. It is mentioned several times in the New Testament. As such, Romans 5.21, 16.20, 1 Corinthians 15.21, 2 Corinthians 11.3 and 4, uh, 1 Timothy 2.14. Okay, you are the teacher, so go right ahead. Please explain all these howling discrepancies and flat-out contradictions away. You're teaching this to God's sheep out there, so prove all things, just as Paul said you ought to do. All right. Um, and so remember, he's talking about the eating of the tree, how that led to Cain's conception, and how um, the eating of the, the fruit from the tree was in the garden, but that Eve was not pregnant until the fall occurred and they were put out of the garden, which is all very true. And if he would actually read my work, I explain all this in great detail. And so I'm going to read this particular passage, again, from the Book of Rolls. And also I'll put the link in the chat room for those of you that are interested in what I'm going to be elaborating on. And also if you want to follow along, uh, if you can find the place, but this is a text I recommend that people read anyways in your spare time um, because it gives a lot of extra detail to, you know, like the Genesis accounting as well as um, like the book of Jasher and Jubilees because all of them relate the same story. They just provide different um you know, elaboration and greater detail here and there, um, here and there about, you know, certain different things. And But it's all the same story. And I believe that the most I did that because people are, you know, the, the seed of Cain has been attempting to hide the truth and has stripped out, disappeared, uh, destroyed, um, hidden, so much of the gospel in its various forms um, so that they can, you know, lead astray, deceive, and confuse the those that are truly trying to find out and understand the full story. Okay, now I'm going to read the this particular passage. While Adam was listening to the speech of his Lord to him and standing upon the place of Golgotha, all the creatures being gathered together that they might hear the conversation of God with him, lo, a cloud of light carried him and went with him to paradise. And the choirs of angels sang before him, the cherubim among them, blessing and the seraphim crying, Holy, until Adam came into paradise. Okay, so remember, Adam was brought into paradise. He entered it at the third hour on Friday, and the Lord to him be praised, gave him 
the commandment and warned him against disobedience to it. And then the Lord to him be praised threw upon Adam a form of sleep, and he slept a sweet sleep in paradise. And God took a rib from his left side, and from him, from it he created Eve. When he awoke and saw Eve, he rejoiced over her and lived with her, and she was in the pleasant garden of paradise. Now remember, uh, now look at this also. This I want to emphasize this. The rib that was taken from Adam, this was um, not a, a rib from his already dust body. This was a rib from his spiritual body, and it was from his, you know, his already spiritual being that Eve was created. Because they had not yet taken on dust bodies. They don't take on flesh until they're cast out of paradise. And this is important um, for for people to understand. Because the fall and their loss of immortality, the loss of their bright nature, is what resulted in their being merged with the dust. And, and placed into bodies of flesh. Okay, continue. Um, and God, and when he awoke and saw Eve, he rejoiced over her and lived with her, and she was in the pleasant garden of paradise. God clothed them with glory and splendor. They outvied one another in the glory with which they were clothed. And that glory is their light being, or what is referred to as their light vesture, which is their immortality, their bright nature as angelic beings. <clears throat> they outvied one another in the glory with which they were clothed, and the Lord crowned them for marriage. The angels congratulated them, and there was joy there, such as never has been the like and never will be till the day in which the people at the right hand shall hear the glorious voice from the Lord. Adam and Eve remained in paradise for three hours. All right. The sight of paradise was high up in the air. Its ground was heavenly raised above all mountains and hills that were 30 spans high, that is 15 cubits according to the cubit of the Holy Ghost. This paradise stretches round from the east by a wall, from the hollow to the southern place of darkness, where the cursed prince was thrown. It is the place of sorrows. All right, let me explain this as well. When... when Lucifer, who became Satan the adversary, and the rebel angels, the one-third of the angels of the Most High that joined him in insurrection, in rebellion, for the war of heaven, the war in heaven. When they were cast out, they were cast out to the lower heavens, and they took up residence on the dark earth. But he became the prince over Sheol and Tartarus, which, you know, we know as hell. And both hell and paradise are at the third heaven. And this is where, this is where Adam, when he was placed into paradise, and this is also where New Jerusalem and where all the saints are now, uh, when Christ died on the cross and, in the first resurrection took Adam uh, all the way to the thief on the cross, all of the patriarchs. When he took them, he took them back to the third heaven, and they were baptized by Michael in the Arturusian lake. They were allowed to enter into New Jerusalem, the city of God. This is that place. This is also... Um, where Sheol is located and that there's various levels um, and that Sheol 
and Tartarus that there's a split. Um, a, the, there's a gulf between them, the, uh, the place of the righteous and the place of the wickedness, and that gulf is separated by the Arturusian Lake. And I'm going to mention, um, in the description of this show, I mention several books that speak about the Ten Heavens, like Second Enoch, The Vision of Paul, The Apocalypse of Peter, uh, The Ascension of Isaiah. Um, there's a number of different texts which speak about the ten heavens. And in relating the ten heavens, they speak about paradise being found at the third heaven. And so if you want to know more, uh, like specifically, the vision of Paul gives the most detail on paradise and the place of sorrows, Sheol, uh, and the dividing gulf, the city of God, New Jerusalem, um, than any other text out there. It's one of my most favorites, so um, check that out as well. All right, continuing. Place of stars. Eden is a fountain of God lying eastwards to a height of eight degrees of the rising of the sun. And this is the mercy of God on which the children of men put their trust, that they shall have a Savior from thence. Because God, may he be exalted and glorified, knew in his foreknowledge what the devil would do to Adam. Adam lived in the treasury of his mercy, as David the prophet had said. Uh, the, I'm skipping just a little bit. Um, all right, I'm going to skip to this part. I mean by this, the mercy which God loved to extend to all men and to our weak grace. Eden is the church of God and the paradise in which is the altar of rest and the length of life which God has prepared for all the saints. Because Adam was king, priest, and prophet, God caused him to enter paradise that he might minister in Eden. The church of God, the Holy Lord. As Moses, the holy prophet, testifies about this, saying that thou shouldest minister and declare by noble and glorious service and keep the commandment by which Adam and Eve were brought into the church of God. And then God planted the tree of life in the middle of paradise, and it was the form of the cross which was stretched upon which was stretched upon it, and it was the tree of life and salvation. Satan remained in his envy to Adam and Eve for the favor which the Lord showed them, and he contrived to enter into the serpent, which was the most beautiful of the animals. And its nature was above the nature of the camel. He carried it till he went with it in the air to the lower parts of paradise. The reason for Iblis, another name for Satan, the curse hiding himself in the serpent was his ugliness. For when he was deprived of his honor, he got into the acme of ugliness till none of the creatures could have borne the sight of him uncovered. And if Eve had seen him unveiled in the serpent, which she spoke to him, she would have run away from him, and neither cunning nor deceit would have availed him with her. But he contrived to hide himself in the serpent, the cunning creature, to teach the birds with round tongues the speech of men, in Greek and such like. All right. Skipping just a little bit. Just a little bit more here. But the cursed devil, when he entered the serpent, came towards Eve. And when she was alone in paradise, away from Adam, 
and called her by her name. She turned to him and looked at her likeness behind the veil. And he talked to her, and she talked to him. And he led her astray by his speech. For woman's nature is weak, and she trusts in his word. And he lectured her about the forbidden tree in obedience to her desire, and described to her the goodness of its taste, and that when she should eat of it, she should become a god. And she longed for what the cursed one made her long for, and she would not hear from the Lord, may his name be sanctified, what he had commanded Adam about the tree. She hastened eagerly towards it and seized some of it in her mouth, and then she called Adam, and he hastened to her. And she gave him of the fruit, telling him that if he ate of it, he would become a god. He listened to her advice because he should become a god, as she said. And when he and she ate the deadly fruit, they were bereft of their glory, and their splendor was taken from them. And they were stripped of the light with which they had been clothed. When they looked at themselves, they were naked of this of their grace, which they had worn, and their shame was manifest to them. They made to themselves aprons of fig leaves and covered themselves therewith, and they were in great sadness for three hours. All right, I got to stop here for just a second. In my books, uh, in in Lucifer, Father of Cain, as well as Sons of God, uh, I because I relate in greater detail this whole story that I'm telling you here, and I explain that the fruit that they ate from from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that that fruit, whatever it was, the paradise that it resulted in their wanting to be as gods themselves and it caused them to lose their immortality and that once they were placed into flesh that this is when and after they were cast out of paradise and placed on the earth that this is when the prophecies of Genesis 3 took place and unfolded. Namely that Eve would be beguiled by Satan or what the Gnostic texts speak of as her being raped by the archons, that she would be impregnated with Cain and that you know uh, Adam would have to work the soil to feed his family, to bring forth sustenance, for them, and that there would be enmity. It would be on the earth, which I refer to as the Garden of Eden. It would be on the earth that enmity, that both the twins would be born, and they would, um, and that there would be the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Another interesting passage uh, that the and let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, another interesting passage about this from the Gnostic text is that it speaks of the three atoms. And I'm going to try to find this real quick. Let me pull it up. The three atoms. And in the relation... Of the three atoms, we have the story of the fall of humanity and also the creation of Adam in the likeness of Yeshua or Christ. And there was another person that had asked me about this as well because they were confused on why I said that Christ was Adam of light. And they thought that I said that Adam was Christ, and that's not what I'm talking about. So let me see if I can find this 
real quick. It comes from on the origin of the world. I should be able to find the passage really quick. And um, and I'll be able because it it speaks about the atom of light, atom of paradise, which is the atom that was created in the sixth day, placed in the paradise, and then the atom of dust. And it was this atom that once atom of paradise fell, Adam was recreated on the eighth day as Adam of dust. I think, okay, here it is. Let me read this passage, and then I'll be able to elaborate a little bit more. And then I'll check the chat room, because I know this can get confusing. Um, but I, if you have questions along this particular line. And I still have to read just a little bit more of the this particular text that I'm re referencing, the Book of Rolls. Now, the first Adam, Adam of light, is spirit endowed and appeared on the first day. This is... Remember, those of you that have followed my shows, have read my books, I speak about how Christ, even though he pre-existed with the Father and the Holy Spirit, that he was unveiled as the light, uh, and that he was given dominion over the angels when he was revealed as the light. When the Most High God, the Father, said, let there be light, this was the unveiling of Christ to all of the other sons of God. And it was this unveiling and his being given dominion over the angels that made Lucifer, the. this was the point where iniquity was found within him because he was jealous of Christ uh, and the Son and his being given dominion over the angels. He wanted to be worshipped. And, you know, the Ezekiel 28, Isaiah chapter 14 where he says I will I want you know all those things the where he says I want to be as the most high I will exalt my uh, throne above the the throne of God uh, all of that um, this, that all occurred and so Adam of light is Christ and it's not that Adam um, you know Adam when he was put in the paradise, that he was Christ. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. And so hopefully this will help uh, that individual to understand some of this as well. So Adam of light, Christ, is spirit endowed. Remember, all things were made from him. And he appeared on the first day. He was revealed to the angels uh, on the first day. The second Adam is soul endowed and appeared on the sixth day. This is Adam that was created and placed into paradise um, before he fell. And it says, continuing with the quote, appeared on the sixth day, which is called Aphrodite. The third Adam is a creature of the earth that is the man of the law, and he appeared on the eighth day the day of tranquility, the tranquility of poverty, which is called the day of the sun or Sunday. And the progeny of the earthly Adam became numerous and was completed and produced within itself every kind of scientific information of the soul endowed Adam, but all were in ignorance. Okay, so this story and the the revelation of the three atoms is basically telling us about the unveiling of Christ, his being given dominion as Adam of light, his creating the second Adam where it says, let us create uh, man in our image after our likeness. That's the Holy Trinity, Christ speaking about creating the second Adam soul endowed Adam, the sixth day Adam, and that this was the Adam that was put in the paradise, and that once he fell, once he and Eve were beguiled, they ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's when they were cast out 
on the eighth day their bodies of flesh were formed and then the breath of life which is their spirit was breathed into their flesh bodies and all of this the story that is all of this is detailed in my sixth book sons of god where i show the difference how they fell from paradise and then how they were recreated in bodies of flesh and banished here to the earth which is the garden of eden and that the difference between paradise and the garden in eden is their that they were once immortal angelic bright natured beings and that having fallen they lost their bright natures their immortality and were placed here on the earth and that and that once they were placed on the earth their spirits were married to their flesh to their dust bodies and so um so i'm going to go back and read this other last passage and then i'll check the chat room all right keep this in mind when i read the rest of this story from the book of rolls okay it says this and when he and she ate the deadly fruit they were bereft of their glory and their splendor was taken from them and they were stripped of the light with which they had been clothed when they looked at themselves they were naked of the grace which they had worn and their shame was manifest to them they made to themselves aprons of fig leaves and covered themselves therewith and they were in great sadness for three hours they did not manage to continue in the grace and the power with which the lord had endued them before their rebellion for three hours till it was taken from them and they were made to slip and fall down at the time of sunset on that day and they received the sentence of god in punishment after the clothing of fig leaves they put on clothing of skins and that is the skin of which our bodies are made being of the family of man and it is a clothing of pain the entrance of Adam into paradise was at the third hour. He and Eve passed through great power. In three hours, they were naked for three hours. And in the ninth hour, they went out of, from paradise unwillingly with much grief, great weeping, mourning, and sighing. They slept towards the east of it near the altar. And when they awoke from their sleep, God spoke to Adam and comforted him, saying to him, Blessed be his name. O oh, Adam, do not grieve, for I will restore thee to thine inheritance, out of which thy rebellion has brought thee. Know that because of my love to thee, I have cursed the earth, and I will not have pity upon it, on account of thy sin. I have cursed also the serpent by whom thou hast been led astray, and I have made its feet go within its belly. I have made dust its food. I have not cursed thee. I have decreed against Eve that she shall be at thy service. Know certainly that when thou hast accomplished the time that I have decreed for thee to dwell outside in the accursed land for thy transgression of my commandment i will send my dear son he will come down to the earth he will be clothed with a body from a virgin of thy race named mary i will purify her and choose her and bring her into power generation after generation until the time that the son comes down from heaven and in that time shall be the beginning of thy salvation and restoration to thine 
inheritance. All right, so remember that once they are cast out of paradise, they take on the bodies of flesh. It's once they are in their bodies of flesh that they are beguiled here on the earth by the serpent or by what the Gnostic text call as the Archon Yaldabaoth specifically, and that Eve is impregnated with Cain, and Cain becomes the firstborn hybrid son of the devil. And so, what this individual speaks about as, you know, let me go back to it, the... All right, he says, I challenge you to explain how it was even possible for you to claim that they eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was intercourse. All right, so as I explained it in my books, they're eating from the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in paradise was not intercourse. It's eating that fruit caused them to lose their immortality. And to be, because they're wanting to be as gods themselves, that's what caused them to be cast out. That's what led to the fall. And, and so if he would read my books, he would exactly understand that I explain exactly what he's referring to here. Okay, um, and so I'll, I'll read this again. Um when the Bible says Adam did not know his wife until after they were put out of the garden. Exactly. It wasn't until they were in flesh that um, that he was able to impregnate her with Abel. And that was after having seen her um, beguiled by Satan, which was resulted in her being pregnant with Cain. This was all after they were cast out of paradise and they were put into bodies of flesh here upon the earth after the eighth day. And so I elaborate in great detail on exactly what he's talking about. Um, but, you know, he, I guess he's just not read my work. Okay, so. Um, Actually, some of the variations of the serpent seed doctrine state that Adam did not know Eve intimately during the time of their stay in the garden, meaning paradise, but Satan did. That Satan beguiled Eve after she was in flesh. Her eating fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil caused them to lose their immortality. But he beguiled her impregnating her with Cain once she was in flesh and once they were placed in on the earth on in the Garden of Eden. Actually, it was the Cave of Treasures. And this is exactly what the Gnostic texts talk about as well because they elaborate, the Gnostic texts elaborate on uh, Adam and Eve um, once they are placed here on the earth another set of texts from the forgotten books of eden the forbidden books of the bible series the first book of adam and eve it also elaborates and i share this information in my book lucifer father of cain as well as um the sons of god because those texts the first and second book of Adam and Eve from the Forbidden Books of the Bible, the Forgotten Books of Eden series, they detail how it was that Adam and Eve lost their bright nature and how they were unfamiliar with, even with walking, and how they did not, uh, they had not yet experienced heat. They did not know uh, the sensation of heat neither had they ever ate or drank anything all of those things are spoken of in the first book of adam and eve and so if you want to know the story of the transition of 
you know, they're uh, from the transition of their loss of their immortality being cast up a paradise and uh, and they're being transmuted, transfigured into flesh. The first book of Adam and Eve gives great detail on this, as well as the series that I did on the Thracian book of Adam and Eve, or Atom and Ua. It details this in great detail as well. And so I explain, you know, going through that series, and this text is, you know, 7,000 years old, the first book of Atom and Ua. Oh, also I have another um, announcement to share with you. I have um, spoken to Alexander, the individual that translated the book of Atom and Ua and made it available for me and allowed me to share it with you in the radio series that I did, that we're going to work together on a book from what is called the Thracian Chronicles. The Thracian Chronicles include the book of Atom and Ua, as well as a book called the Book of Longinus, which Longinus was the Roman soldier that had stabbed the side of Christ when he was on the cross to verify that he was dead. And having saw all of these signs, um, that took place during the crucifixion, he became a disciple of Christ. And so that's just two of the books that compiled the Thracian Chronicles. And so he and I are going to work together to provide an English translation of the full collection of those texts, which currently the book of Atom and Ua is the only one that is available in English to the public at large, and that's only through the radio shows that I've done on it. That it's not has not been released in print, but that when I publish my next book, um, whether it's the book on the wars in heaven, which I'm working on now, or the the um, the the book on the Thracian Chronicles, that will be the first time that all of these texts become available to you. Because I know a lot of you have asked me about them. You're quite excited to read them for yourself. Uh, and I want to make them available to you. And that's one of the reasons why Alexander is excited to work with me on this project. Um, because they are not currently available and the Thracians are you know they were the oldest Christians they predate the Sumerians and the ancient Egyptians and so that also needs to be shared and and referenced all right I'm looking at a little bit in the chat room. It seems like there was somebody that believes that Christ is just a a political contrivance of sort. It's so funny how so many people actually fall for that. But um, So I'm just looking. <laughs> okay. I'm glad he left. I don't mind, you know, haters or doubters as long as they speak to others in a, a way that honors each other and the variations of opinion. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't um I don't expect everybody to believe everything that I say, but when you do it in negativity and without respect, um I certainly will boot people like that out of the room. All right. So I'm going to continue with this explanation and with this particular text so that I hope it explains to you 
what I write about and what I cover in my text and what the difference is between paradise and the Garden of Eden. Because paradise is where Adam was placed after his creation and um, and when he fell, what we call the fall, when he fell and lost his immortality, his bright nature, he fell from paradise, which is at the third heaven. Being cast out, he was placed here to the dark earth where the rebel angels had already been banished to. And so, um, and that's why we see, you know, modern creation of humanity going six, back 6,000 years, but that there's all these megalithic structures and massive, you know, cities at the bottom of the ocean and lakes and uh, all this high technology and things that um, had been accomplished by what we consider what science teaches as the pre-Adamic humans, but it wasn't the pre-Adamic humans that created all of that. It was the rebel angels, the Anunnaki, if you want to call them, that uh, the feathered serpent, what the Bible refers to as the Nakash, the flying fiery serpents, those beings, what mythology refers to as the dragons of old, Revelation 12, that ancient serpent, that old dragon known as the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Those particular beings, they were the ones that were cast out here to the earth prior to the creation of Adam and Eve, modern Adam and Eve, and prior to the fall of Adam and Eve to this place and their being um, housed and told to stay in the cave of treasures. So all of that occurred before what I refer to as the prior times or the pre-Adamic age. All of that is... Um, well, I'm glad, Linko, that you are appreciative of the teachings. Uh, she or he says, I'm so grateful to be here praying for this. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'm grateful to all of you for taking the time to join me and for listening to the information that I share. I hope that it blesses you and helps you to understand because if, um, and I'm not certainly not just trying to sell my books, but if you ever have tried to read the Gnostic text and it did not make sense to you, that my book, Sons of God, and certainly you can find all of the radio programs. You don't you don't have to buy my books in order to get the gist of what I teach because, as I said, there's almost 600 videos on my YouTube account, and I'll provide that link in the chat room as well. Um that freely cover all of this information in great detail. And you do not have to buy any of it in order for you to get the revelation that I'm sharing. I know it's a lot of information, and because um, I source and reference basically every text you can find out there, including the you know the Sumerian mythology, all the ancient history and the oral tradition of um, people from all all the apocrypha, pseudepigrapha, the Nag Hammadi codices, the Dead Sea Scroll, the, the Book of Jasher Jubilees, all those things, everything I cover all that information in great detail. Or I'm going to give you my my YouTube the link to my 
um, YouTube page, and you can find all of this information there freely available. And if you ever have any questions, if you don't understand something and you want me to elaborate on it, you can contact me at zengarcia.com and just you know shoot me an email or uh, contact me, Zen Garcia, on Facebook and ask me, and I'll be glad to elaborate as I did today um, you know, on the questions, the things that you're confused on or you want greater detail upon, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to do so. In fact, I was just asked by uh, my friend Hugh, who just ordered many of my books. On, on one of the reasons why I did this show this evening is some questions and concerns that he had as well on some of this information. And so I'll be able to send him this link. Um, Linka says, you are a major godsend for me. I can hardly wait to read your books and listen to all. Uh, it's amazing. I've been asking Yeshua for truth, the true teaching. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. And also, just so you know, if you decide to, and if you want to purchase my books, you can email me through zengarcia.com. I can bundle them together for you and provide you a discount as well as I autograph them for free. I personalize them for those of you that, you know, want to buy my books. Um, and I don't, I don't charge for, you know, to autograph them or um, make them any more expensive. Um, and so that would be the best way to go if you, are interested in my work. Uh, the books that I have available, my first two books are not available. They're sold out. Look Somewhere Different is my first book. When the Evening Dies, my second book. Um, but I do have my third through my eighth book available. My third book, A Different Way of Being. My fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain. My fifth book, Awaken to the New World Order, my sixth book, Sons of God, Who We Are, Why We Are Here, my seventh book, Skyfall, and my eighth book, uh, The Aramaic and Palestinian Targums, or The Aramaic Targums, which I cover, you know, the, the Targums are the translations, the Aramaic translation of the original Hebrew Torah going back to very, very, uh, you know, like the original, the first ones began to be compiled like first century CE after um, the return of the Hebrew people to Israel and the rebuilding of the temple that um, once they were you know, back from exile because they no longer spoke Hebrew, but only the scholarly class, the, the priestly class could speak Hebrew and, and understand it. When service and worship was restored in the temple, um, they would read the Torah in the original Hebrew, but then they would have to explain it in Aramaic which was the vernacular of the day for the Middle Eastern people. And so they would have to read the Ara the Hebrew, explain it in the Aramaic, and then once the people started, the Hebrew Israelites started to demand um, a written translation, what is called the Targum, um, the priests, the rabbis, they authorized a official translation. And this translation came to be what is known as the Targums. And again, as I said, it was the Aramaic translation of the official uh, Hebrew Torah. And the English 
translation of the Aramaic translation is absolutely fascinating because it also speaks about what I'm covering here. And it also tells us that Cain was a child of the serpent. And so, you know, those are things which um, we say are not in the original Hebrew, but the Targums verify that they were, and that the original Hebrew Torah, um, when they translate into Aramaic, that it it also says what I teach in my books. You know, with the Lucifer father of Cain and the other things. All of that is found within them. And I source the Targums as well as all these, the other texts. They are all found in, you know, I provide 290 references in my fourth book alone, which you know, details all of the things that I'm telling you here. All right. Uh, just a, Mur says, Zen, you are a fantastic example of a real child of the living word and how we are to be. You will have a huge robe and proud name in heaven. Amen. Well, thank you so much for that, Mur. Uh, but we're all, we're all just servants. To the most high we're all um, children in service foot washers to each other uh, that you know I'm just like all of you I just have had a little bit more time to study these things because of my disability and that if all of you had the time as well that you certainly would do as I do especially if you love the scriptures as i as i do you would um you would read and and be brought to similar revelation mini mini donut send me an email again and i'll be sure to give you the details i may have not gotten it or have overlooked it and so definitely send me an email again, and I'll be sure to give you the information on how to, you know, purchase my books. And like I said, I, I'll make the discounts available to those of you interested in more than just one, um, and that I will personalize them for you free of charge. All right, I'm going to read just a couple more things from the differentiation on paradise and the Garden of Eden. Just to give you a little bit more information to where you can study or share. And just um, Here's a, a quote from Corpse to God. It says this, The messenger Paul knew this gate. He hath opened it in a mystery and said that, he had been seized by an angel and taken to the second and third heaven, to paradise itself, where he saw what he saw and heard ineffable words that a man is not allowed to relate. And so in this passage, Paul is basically saying that he was shown paradise and he found it in the third heaven, which is exactly what I talked about as well. Here's a little bit more of elaborate um, passage about paradise. And there were by the and there were by the bank of the river trees planted full of different fruits. And I looked forward towards the rising of the sun, and I saw there trees of great size full of fruits, and that land was more brilliant than silver and gold. And there were vines growing on those date palms, and myriads of shoots, and myriads of clusters on each branch. And I said to the archangel, 
what is this, my lord? And he says to me, this is the Arturusian lake, and within it the city of God. All are not permitted to enter into it, except whosoever shall repent of his sins. And as soon as he shall repent and alter his life, he is delivered to Michael, and they cast him into the Arturusian lake. And then he brings him in the city of God, near the righteous. And I wondered and blessed God at all that I saw. And the angel said to me, Follow me that I may bring thee into the city of God and into its light. And its light was greater than the light of the world and greater than gold and, and walls encircled it. And the length and the breadth of it were a hundred stadia. And I saw twelve gates exceedingly ornamented leading into the city and four rivers encircled it flowing with milk and honey and oil and wine and i looked and saw in the midst of the city an altar great and very lofty and there was one standing near the altar whose face shone like the sun and he had in his hands a psaltery and a harp and he sang the alleluia delightfully and his voice filled all the city. And after these things, the angel says to me, Behold, thou hast seen all the torments. Come, follow me, that I may lead thee away to paradise, and that thou mayest change thy soul by the sight of the righteous. For many desire to salute thee, and he took me by an impudence impulse of the spirit and brought me into paradise and he says to me this is paradise where adam and eve transgressed and i saw there a beautiful tree of great size on which the holy spirit rested and from the root of it there came forth all manner of most sweet smelling water parting into four channels and I said to the angel, My Lord, what is this tree that there comes forth from it a great abundance of this water? And where does it go? And he answered and he said to me, Behold, the heaven and the earth existed. He divided them into four kingdoms and heads of which the names are Phison, Gehon, Tigris, and Euphrates. And having again taken hold of me by the hand, he led me near the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he says to me, This is the tree by which means by this is the tree by means of which death came into the world. And Adam took of the fruit of it from his wife and ate, and thereafter they were cast out hence. And he showed me another, the tree of life, and said to me, This is the cherubim and the flaming sword guard. That's from the vision of Paul. And as I said, the vision of Paul gives great detail, just incredible detail um, about, you know, this, about what we've been covering here this evening and I would definitely recommend to people to study it to read it and to become familiar with it because it will elaborate on all those things that I have been talking about sharing and teaching over all of these years okay I want to share the description of paradise from the book of Enoch. And then I'll check again the chat room. And those men took me thence and led me up on to the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and I saw the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees 
and beheld their fruits, which were sweet-smelling, and all the foods borne by them, bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees, that of life, in that place whereon the Lord rests when he goes up into paradise. And this tree is of ineffable, ineffable goodness and fragrance and adorned more than every existing thing. And on all sides it is in the form gold-looking and vermilion and fire-like and covers all and it has produce from all fruits. Its root is in the garden at the earth's end. And paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk. And their springs send forth oil and wine. And they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And thence they go forth along the earth and have a revolution to their circle, even as other elements. And here there is no unfruitful tree, and every place is blessed. And there are three hundred angels, very bright, who keep the garden. And with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices, serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. The Book of the Secrets of Enoch or Enoch 2, chapter 8, verse 1 through 9. I think I have time to share one more passage. This is from the first book of Adam and Eve. Thus spake the Lord and ordered us to be cast out of paradise. But your father Adam wept before the angel opposite paradise. And the angel said to him, What wouldst thou have us to do, Adam? And your father saith to them, Behold, ye cast me out. I pray you allow me to take away fragrant herbs from paradise so that I may offer an offering to God after I have gone out of paradise that he hear me. And the angels approached God and said, Jael, eternal king, command, my Lord, that there be given to Adam incense of sweet odor from paradise and seeds for his food. And God bade Adam go in and take sweet spices and fragrant herbs from paradise and seeds for his food. And the angels let him go, and he took four kinds, crocus and nard and calamus and cinnamon, and the other seeds for his food. And after taking these, he went out of paradise, and we were on the earth. The first book of Adam and Eve. Chapter 29, verse 1 through 7. And so, I hope that you see, and I've got a lot more. There's a whole chapter um, in my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain, on the difference between paradise and the Garden of Eden. And and I detail some of the things that I'm talking about here, but in my sixth book, Sons of God, who we are and why we're here, I detail in great um, profundity all of what we're talking about here. And it's it's my belief that I share all of the source references, all of the information that I've um, read from, here with you in that particular book and so now let me see if I can catch a couple of uh, some things that are being stated in the chat room 
uh, the conversation has been long, so I'm not sure I'll be able to cover all of that. But we've got uh, a few minutes. Um, just so you know, I'm not a Gnostic in any way. Uh, but I do read the material. And it's my opinion that the discovery of the Nakamati Codices is part of the outpouring of spirit that is referenced in Joel and also in the book of Daniel. And that the secrets being revealed to us as the last generation, that absolutely the Nakamati Codices or what are referenced as the Gnostic texts, that they are a great part of that revelation. For those that have never studied or never looked into, never read those texts, many of those are considered to be the secret teachings of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, because they were books that were written after his resurrection. And when he comes back to the apostles, the 40 days, he comes back to the apostles and he teaches them about um, the secrets of heaven and earth. And that it's in those texts that he details and provides great revelation of who the archons are as the fallen angels, the the powers, the principalities, the rulers of darkness, not of this world, wickedness in high places. And he tells us that our war is not one of flesh and blood, but one of a spiritual war. And he also gives great detail as to Cain being a child of the serpent, because that revelation is also shared in those texts. And so, you know, a lot of people um, label people Gnostics like it's some negative connotation, but the original Gnostics were just knowers of truth, seekers of truth. And they knew the things which we have forgotten, especially those that only read from the 66 books of the official King James Version of the canon and that exclude everything else. Um, you know, it's my opinion that you are missing so much of what is the revelation of truth. And that even the original canon of the King James Version of the Bible, it was 80 books, including the 13 books of the Apocrypha, as well as the Shepherd of Irmaz, which, you know, isn't even part of the Apocrypha anymore. Um, you can find all of those. Linko asked me, how do we get those texts? You can find all of the texts that I've referenced at sacredtext.com. That's sacred, S-A-C-R-E-D, hyphen, or dash, text, T-E-X-T-S, dot com. Even the, you know, the first book of Adam and Eve, uh, the collection, the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden, um, the second Enoch, first Enoch, the third book of Enoch, uh, the book of the roll, all of those you can find there um, at sacredtext.com. So I hope that this has blessed you and that it has helped you to understand, you know, what I teach uh, because, you know, I, I basically teach that it wasn't until they were cast out and they were removed from paradise banished from paradise, which, by the way, our return to our first estate is our return to paradise. And so all of that has part to do with our own fall as well. I hope that you are all blessed and well. Um, we'll see you Wednesday. Join me on Revolution Radio uh, at freedomslips.com. 
Studio B, 8 to 10 p.m. You can just check my Facebook, Zen Garcia, for all the links for the upcoming shows. God bless all. Good night.